In today's video, we'll be taking a look at animals that you wouldn't want to see while I'm walking in the woods, or more specifically, in the forest. Some of the entries aren't pretty obvious. They're after all predators with sharp teeth and claws, but some will genuinely surprise you. Possibly. Which of these animals do you find absolutely terrifying? Let us know down below in the comments. Now, before the video starts, I want you to go down right now and hit that like button. Also, while you're down there, make sure to subscribe for more videos. If you do hit that subscribe button, then also hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can turn on post notifications. If you have hit that like button, you did subscribe to the channel, then let me know by putting a comment below saying, I subscribe, then I'll reply back to 100 lucky individuals. Our first entry is the Kalugo. If we were to guess the creature in the photo, we'd probably say giant flyer killer bat. However, this animal isn't actually a bat, and it does not technically fly as well. These Kalugo, also known as the flying lemur, are nocturnal tree-dwelling mammals that can be found high above forest canopies all throughout Southeast Asia. Though they may look like dangerous predators due to their imposing wingspan, Kalugo are actually shy and prefer to live in solitude. They sleep during the daytime, usually inside hollow trees or suspended from a branch, and at night they forage for food by gliding from tree to tree. Very seldom will Kalugo find food on the forest floor, as they're slow and clumsy on the ground. Kalugo glide through the air through the aid of a web-like membrane joining its limbs called the patagium. In fact, these creatures are the best gliders in the world. They have the greatest possible surface area on their patagium, stretching from the animal's face to the tips of each of its claws. They can glide distances of up to 100 meters while losing very little altitude. Definitely a nifty skill. Our next entry is the Amazonian Giant Centipede. The Amazonian Giant Centipede is the largest centipede species in the world. This carnivorous creature grows to about 12 inches long and preys on a wide variety of animals. Many of these animals are actually bigger than itself, and it's also native to the Caribbean and South America. The Amazonian giant centipede feeds on any small animals they come across, including invertebrates, lizards, amphibians, and small mammals such as mice or bats. They can also hang upside down from cave openings to catch their prey. Venom is then injected into the victim via the forcipoles. This paralyzes or even kills the victim, allowing the centipede to tear apart and eat their meal with little to no resistance. These animals are primarily nocturnal and thus will rarely interact with humans. I'd still be cautious, though, because these bites still carry enough venom to cause intense pain, swelling, and fever. There is one recorded case of death by this species involving a four-year-old in Venezuela who got stung by a giant centipede inside an open soda can. Centipedes are considered nuisance pests as they're known to enter damp or warm areas inside wall crevices or floorboards of houses. However, unlike other house pests, they do not create nests or damaged property. These active hunters will even help control the pest population, as flies, roaches, termites, and silverfish are part of their diet. Next up, we have the Vampire Bat. The common vampire bat is a flying mammal that can be found in Central and South America. They live in colonies in almost completely dark places, such as caves, hollowed out trees, or even abandoned buildings. These nocturnal animals sleep during the day in total darkness, often suspended upside down from cave roofs. During the darkest part of the night, the bats emerge to hunt. As the name suggests, though, vampire bats feed entirely on blood. Sleeping cattle, pigs, and horses, they're all victims of choice there. The bats then drink their victim's blood for about 30 minutes, and they don't remove enough blood to harm their host, but the bite itself can cause nasty infections and disease. Each bat has a heat sensor on its nose that points them to the best spot to puncture for warm blood. After latching onto an animal with their tiny but razor-sharp teeth, the vampire bat begins to lap up the flowing blood with its tongue. Enzymes in its saliva numb the pain and prevent the blood from clotting. Though uncommon, vampire bats have been reported to bite humans to feed. In reality, they're more likely to avoid you. However, vampire bats are dangerous for one more reason. These animals are responsible for the biggest rabies outbreaks in Latin America, causing thousands of livestock deaths every year. This, in turn, can cause some human fatalities by association. Next, we have the Rafflesia. Rafflesia is a genus of parasitic flower with 28 known species endemic in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, and the Philippines. They range in size from the 4-inch Rafflesia consale to the monstrous 4-feet Rafflesia arnoldi, which is also the world's biggest flower. Besides its size, it's known for its large red petals that look and smell like rotten flesh. Due to its foul odor, it's nicknamed the Corpse Flower. 
This unique flower's parasitic nature means it depends on other organisms for nutrition, instead of photosynthesis like a traditional one. Rafflesia species do not contain roots, stems, or leaves. They actually begin life as buds that grow out of the roots of their preferred host, the tetrastigma vine. This vine provides all that plant needs to survive. A year into its life cycle, the petals open up for about five to seven days to signal the start of the flowering season. The flower scent of rotting meat reaches its peak on the third or fourth day of bloom, attracting a specific type of insect called the carrion fly. These flies seek out rotten or decaying flesh, which they use as a place to lay their eggs. The Rafflesia then sticks pollen to any of the flies that come too close, fulfilling their role as pollinator. Today, many Rafflesia species are in danger of becoming extinct. Their infrequent blooming periods and poor pollination rates are further put under siege by threats of their habitat. One of their biggest threats is illegal poaching, because apparently they have supposed medicinal properties. And since no one has successfully cultivated a Rafflesia by artificial methods, this means the only way to safeguard this exceptional flower is to preserve its habitat. Next we have the Pit Viper. Pit Vipers get their name from heat-sensitive pits found on each side of their face. This large family of snakes can be found in most continents except for Antarctica, Africa, and Australia. They inhabit a wide variety of habitats, from dense jungles to arid deserts. Some members of this family are rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and copperheads. Pit vipers are most known for their dangerous fangs, which are long, hollow, and can move in different directions. They can also move independently, which means deadly precision when the viper is about to bite. The fangs also connect to venom glands located behind the eyes. Venom travels downwards to be injected into prey as the viper bites. Pit vipers are generally nocturnal hunters. They use their pits as infrared receptors, allowing them to detect both warm-blooded and cold-blooded prey even in total darkness. This stealthy predator preys on small mammals, birds, lizards, and eggs. After killing their victim, they then swallow it whole. Now, pit vipers are harmless around humans, striking only if cornered or threatened. Nevertheless, several species do possess enough venom to kill. The Russell Viper, native to India, is one of the most dangerous snakes in all of Asia, with its venom causing severe symptoms of spontaneous bleeding, lack of coagulation, and acute renal failure. That's one snake we're never gonna dare play around with. Next we have the Poison Dart Frog. Poison Dart Frogs are painted in some of the most brilliant hues in nature. They're endemic to the tropical regions of Central and South America and are generally found in tropical rainforests. Funny enough, their coloration is actually a warning as they're considered the most toxic animal in the entire world, with the gold one especially being toxic. These colorful amphibians are omnivores and they enjoy feasting on insects such as ants, termites, and beetles. These insects also serve a second function. They're responsible for the frog's powerful toxin. Bright colors and vivid patterns serve as the frog's way to discourage predation. The dart frog's poison isn't only distasteful, but it can even be fatal to a predator that dares to try and bite it. For instance, the golden poison dart frog's toxin interferes with the victim's nervous system, causing extreme pain, muscular paralysis, and even cardiac failure. Each poison dart frog species produces a unique toxin made up of different alkaloids and other chemicals. Scientists have been studying these alkaloids and have found them beneficial for people with heart and circulatory problems. A painkiller derived from the tricolor frog resulted in a drug 200 times more effective than morphine, without the side effects even. Next, we have the Black Cayman. The Black Cayman is a carnivorous reptile that can be found in freshwater habitats, such as slow-moving rivers, lakes, and wetlands. It can grow up to 20 feet long, making it the largest member of the alligator family and the largest predator in the Amazon basin. Black Caymans have a dark, almost black coloration, as suggested by their name. Similar to alligators, they're characterized by their sharp teeth, powerful jaws, and large tails. They have thick, scaly skin, and their eyes and noses can be found at the top of the head. This allows them to see and breathe while the rest of their bodies remain submerged underwater. The Black Cayman is an apex predator, meaning it is capable of taking on any animal within its habitat, including other predators. Hatchlings prey on small fish, frogs, and crustaceans, and then they graduate to larger Amazonian fish, which includes piranhas. Larger adults also have been observed eating smaller caiman species and even cannibalizing smaller individuals of their own species. Other prey will be hunted based on availability, including snakes, turtles, birds, and mammals. Typical mammalian prey include monkeys, armadillos, and capybaras. Even domesticated animals like pig and cattle aren't safe to this thing. Attacks on humans have been reported in the past, with more than 80 attacks listed over the past 20 years. Caimans are aggressive and will attack when provoked or threatened, including fishermen's boats that may pass near their hunting grounds. 
Humans, in truth, nearly hunted this animal to extinction in the 1970s. It was then added to the endangered species list during the peak of black caiman leather trade. Thanks to protective actions against the trade of its products, though, black caiman population numbers have steadily recovered. And now our final entry, the Zizi fly. Zizi flies are large biting flies that live all over tropical Africa. They're parasitic insects that live off of the blood of vertebrates and responsible for the proliferation of the sleeping sickness in humans and wildlife. These little guys are the scourge of rural Africa. Zizis transmit a deadly parasite called a trypanosome that attacks the blood and nervous systems of its victims. This causes trypanosomiasis, known as sleeping sickness in humans and nagana in livestock. This disease is the most devastating to ever hit Sub-Saharan Africa, with an 80% death rate in its infected victims. Food production was hit hard, with thousands of bovine cattle and pigs outright killed by the disease. The most effective way to control ZZ flies has so far been pretty destructive. Clearing and burning of woodlands in the flies' habitats work to reduce their populations. However, there has been a newer alternative in the introduction of large numbers of lab-irradiated sterile males flying into the wild population. This allows the males to mate but produce no offspring. And since the females only mate once in their lifetime, this wastes their chance at offspring. These were some great lays taken to destroy an entire species, but we're sure it's justified against the world's most dangerous pests. See you all next time!